If you don't like painted furniture, you might want to scroll on by or even maybe just watch through and see if I can change your mind with a paint pattern of finish, a very simple one. Anyhow, let's take a closer look at this piece of furniture. So I'm just going to take a moment to take you through my train of thought for this piece of furniture. I am going to create a custom colour. I want another kind of a nuance of a neutral, um, autumnal, um, mustardy brown tone, which is a little bit counterintuitive when this is already brown, I know that. But it will be fresh and bright and it will show all of these wonderful details. So the other thing is, when you've got a piece like this, I think um, with all of this gorgeous detailing on it, there's, there's a chance that you kind of want to over elaborate on those pieces and highlight them and maybe add gold or um, literally um, paint them all another colour. And I think the chair speaks for itself as it was in one brown finish with slight nuances of darkness into all of the details. I think it looks much better. So for me, I'm going to pare this down with just slight changes of colour to the surface and it's going to be more or less one colour with a few other hidden little tricks along the way. So yes, if it was your piece of furniture, you can do exactly as you wish. But for me, this speaks for itself and I think it needs to be quite plain and not too ostentatious. I hope that makes sense. So we're going to mix up a beautiful colour with two colours that I absolutely adore, on fleur and furl. Before I start mixing my custom shade, my kind of mustardy brownie shade, I just want to take you through a little bit of why I've chosen on fleur and furl together. On fleur is quite a reddy brown. As you can see on Annie's colour wheel, it's closer to the red side of the colour wheel. So if I go up to the red here, what is its complementary colour? Go straight down and you hit the green. So green is its com complementary colour and fur is not there. It's down here on this colour chart, but it would be around the green shades. It is a yellowy green. So I'm kind of neutralising some of the brown and the green and meeting in the middle to create a really interesting neutral somewhere in the middle. Uh, and I know it to be a good mix. I've done it before and I absolutely love it. So that's why I'm choosing to use um, Furl and En Fleur. Furl is quite a light yellowy green, which means it's gonna lighten the En Fleur as well. Let's mix up the color. So I'm going in with more of my furl than the on fleur and I'm just going to build the on fleur into it until I'm happy with the shade.
So I'm quite happy with this actual shade, but I want to lighten it a fraction more. I think this might be a little too dark. So I'm gonna bring in some Versailles because originally I thought I wanted to do it Versailles and on Fleur, but I really like the shade, but we're just gonna lighten it a fraction. So I bring in some um, Versailles and I mean not too much of the Versailles. It's just gonna go in a little bit just to loosen that that shade, make it lighter. Again, Versailles is a kind of a greeny undertone to it. So that also adds to the shade. And there we go, beautiful. Just what I'm looking for, an earthy sort of golden. Can we see? It's a little bit, it's hard to see on the camera, but it's a little bit lighter. I'm going to go back in with a touch more fur, and I think that'll be about it. has dried pretty quick it's quite dry and bright for a late October day I'm going to go back in with another coat think of your first coat as your primer coat um, this is the coat that will add real great adhesion to the surface the second coat is to get coverage and then we can proceed with our other paint treatments that we choose to do over the top so whilst I'm painting I'm going to talk a little bit about um, some changes that I'm just going to temporarily make to my YouTube ch channel. Um, so I am going to still be painting furniture, but for the next few weeks, I'm going to go into the house to try and finish some of my interior projects, which I have put off and put off for such a long time because I've been in the studio every week doing a tutorial. So I've got a bathroom that I've been needing to renovate for some time and I think I'm going to take you on that journey. So I'm hoping that you'll enjoy it. Of course there will be paint involved, there will be chalk paint, um, satin paint, some woodwork treatment, um, 
what I've got planned for the bathroom is try and make do amend with what I've got. I've got a beautiful bathroom that the previous owners put in. The suite is gorgeous, um, but there are a few things that don't work for me in the room, and that's probably a lot to do with colour. Um, the whole bathroom has been tiled in a neutral, sort of a country grey stone effect tile, floor to ceiling. And the floor has a slate grey finish. And the two things together for me just don't work. The tiles on the floor for a long time have really bothered me with the neutral on the wall. They just, it was good at the time, probably when they put them in, but now I want to lighten the space up. Um, so we're gonna do some floor tile painting. Now, I know that's quite controversial. Lots of people have done it. I've seen many YouTube tutorials myself with a variety of different um, outcomes to how that worked out. So I'm gonna take you on that journey for the tiles. And also we're gonna paint the outside of my bath. Um, I'm gonna show you all of the right products I say right, we will revisit it a year down the line to see how well I did of my job of the bathroom. But I think I know all of the products that I'm gonna to use to get a great finish in my bathroom. I suppose the bathroom is a great bathroom, but to remove the tiles, floor and walls, is a big job and everything that I do I like to cut the co keep the costs down so changing those finishes is how I'm going to do it there's also a beautiful cupboard I say beautiful it's a kitchen cupboard in the bathroom that I'm going to refinish with a reclaimed wooden door and paint that I'm also going to add some architectural details some um, skirting boards and architrave so i'm going to take you on that journey with the woodwork and i think the process is probably going to take me about five or six weeks so i'm just going to tune in each week and give you progress reports on how i did what i did throughout the, pro the project and i hope that you'll join me meanwhile if you are a regular on my channel um, and you love what I do with painted furniture please go into all of the videos and lives and check that you haven't see uh, check that you haven't missed any of my previous videos something that might interest you and also just to help the algorithms while I'm going through this process grab one of your favorite videos and just share it share it and hopefully if everybody shares there's nearly 60,000 of you. If everybody shares one video and another person comes to the channel, that might be 60,000 more, and it will really help me and my channel pushing out there to brand new painters. I know that I want to add some patina to this beautiful, rich golden colour, and I've gone all the way around Annie's colour wheel to find the colour that I think will be best for this piece. I thought actually on Fleur might be great, but I'm thinking I'm going to add dark wax to some of the details. So I've ended up with olive and I'm going to apply um, a colour wash, but I'm going to do it Annie's way, the wet wax way. So I'm going to apply a coat of a healthy coat of clear wax to the piece quite quickly. I'm not going to work in sections, I'm going to work the whole piece. Uh, I'm going to brush the wax on, like I said, quite heavily. And then once that's on, we're going to do a colour wash over the surface, which I've pre-mixed. This is olive, and I would say there is 40% um, paint to 60% um, water. As you can see, it's falling off the brush. I have a large brush to apply it quickly. I'm also going to apply my uh, wax with a large paintbrush so I can get it on very quickly. So, let's hope we can create some wonderful patina. Wet cloth, dry cloth, so I can remove things. If some of the wood comes back, I'm happy with that because I think I'm going to add some fly spec to age the whole piece. So let's see how this turns out.
So I'm really happy with the way that the olive has changed the colour. It's a little bit more pistachio in its tone. I love it. You know I like green. Um, but what I'm going to do now is um, add a little bit of fly spec. And I'm going to go back with the original colour. And you can see just how much that's changed the colour from the golden natural brownie tone to the green tone. But we're going to add some of this back to the surface with fly spec. So the same thing again, I've taken about 40% paint to 60% water into a small bowl, mixed it up, and we're going to use a brush. Now you need to find a brush that's kind of quite, um, the bristles are quite twangy, if that's a word. So you can flick the whole piece with the original colour. We're going to do this again, probably with on fleur, maybe a touch of, um, maybe a touch of primer red into on fleur, or maybe just on fleur, because it's quite warm anyway. So on fleur over the surface to add the fly spec that will look like little worm holes in the piece. But I think this will add another nuance. The original cloth that I was taking the colour wash off and distressing, so um, it is a beautiful way to, excuse me, <clears throat> excuse me, um, a beautiful way to uh, distress a piece by adding lots of wax, colour washing. It doesn't take all of the paint off in one go and the it just pulls it away really nicely. So if you're looking for a very natural distressing look, use the wet wax technique. Of course, you can use it in so many different ways with different colorways. Anyway, enough talking, let's get a bit creative with the fly spec. I'm going to go back in with my Enfleur um, colour wash. Again, it's about 40% paint to 6% water. Same thing again. I'm going to pass over this with my original cloth. Remember, when you're doing this, take your cloth and scrunch it into a little rosette. And then it will, when you're offloading the paint, it will kind of not leave any straight lines or just it'll be more a natural pattern. So I'm going to do a pass with Enfleur over the piece, take it off and then the very final fly spec we may add a touch of graphite and just do them as solid little holes rather than offloading.
I'm at the final stage of this project and that is to give the whole piece another coat of clear wax and I'm gonna go in with a touch of dark wax and I mean minimal, just to some of these carved details. I think the piece looks great as more or less a solid colour with all of those beautiful nuances. Stay tuned to the end of the tutorial so you can see all of those details close up. It's a little bit hard to show them on camera during the process. And if you are one of those people that really, really love wooden furniture and you stay to the end, I hope you can appreciate the love and care that's gone into this piece. And I hope you feel like it looks as if it's always had paint on. Something like from a Palazzo or Gustavian furniture that started out life with paint from the beginning. Anyhow, much love to everyone and the regular followers. If you can, don't forget to share one of your favourite videos. It really will help my channel grow. I really appreciate you coming every week to the premiere and I will see you next week, maybe in the bathroom.